episode of Command Combat Battle Reports. Today we are at Emerald Knights in Burbank, California, where we are going to get a lesson in painting. This particular lesson we're going to use Warhammer 40K. Take it away, boys. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Jarrett, now you have all your models put together and whatnot. Um, I'm going to go over how to primer your figures. That's the way I was taught. Just kind of lay all your guys down, give them some good spacing like this. I'm going to do it on a cardboard box like this because we're going to be primering outside and you don't want to primer onto the ground or on the cement or in your garage or anything like that because you don't want to get paint on anything. So I like to use a cardboard box. A lot of times the box tops that like vehicles come in are really good. So you lay them all down, get them all nice and spaced out. You've got your orc boys there. I have some chaos fantasy chosen here that I'm going to put down, that I assembled. Get them all like evenly spaced. Now I'm not actually going to primer these right now, I'm just going to kind of go over how you do it. This, I use the, the Citadel primer. This is my favorite. It might be expensive, but it gets the job done. It goes on evenly and lightly. And the idea is you're just trying to get a nice little coating on these guys because all of the Citadel paints are um, water-based and water doesn't stick to plastic, right? So what you do is you put the primer on there so that the paint will stick to the primer. You take them all like this, shake your paint up really well, I'm not actually going to primer. Be aware of where the nozzle is pointing because you got to know which side is coming out. Rule of thumb, you're about the length of the can away, like about so far, more or less. And you're just going to give it a just a light dusting. It's better to slowly build up layers of like little spritzes than to just like unload with the can. Because when you unload with the can, like it'll gob on there and it'll obscure all the details. So you don't want to do that. You just want to hit them, like psh, 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 get them all like coated. Then don't touch the models. You rotate the box, which is another reason why you put everything on one box. Then you give them again, like hit them all again, psh, 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 and you just rotate it all around. Three sides, four sides, all the way around. Spray them all around. Wait for them to dry, like 10 minutes. If you've only lightly dusted them, it won't take long at all for it to dry. Gob the paint on, they'll still be gooey and paint covered. So that's another reason why you like to dust them. Once they're all dry, you take them by the base just to be sure you don't smudge any paint and just flip them over. And you'll see the parts that you didn't hit. And you just flip every single one over and then you repeat the whole process and everything will be primer. Now the reason why <clears throat> I primer guys laying down like this is because when you hit them say from this angle, it's gonna get up and under. Whereas if you primer them standing up like this, you're going to have to go down and up like this to try and get up and hit every little spot. We want to make sure we're outside in a very ventilated area when we do the primering. Don't do it in your garage. Don't do it in your garage with the door closed. Don't do it in your room. Definitely don't do it inside because this is really powerful fumes that come off of this stuff. And this stuff's highly flammable. So don't do it next to a campfire, because I know that's probably what you wanted to do. Like go camping and then paint some models. No, okay, so um, yeah, it's just really got a lot of fumes going on here. A lot of times you might want to be aware of which way the wind is blowing, because that's going to float the paint. And sometimes you also have to be aware of like, oh, there's a car over there. So you don't want to be too close to the car, because the paint could float over and land on a car. So I'm actually going to move a little bit further this way just so that we're sure that nothing happens. You may want to do this up like on a table or something, but you don't see anything too good. So, yeah. Yeah. so here we go, we just come in. Don't freak out too bad, the model's moving around. Like I said, we're just getting a light dusting. It. 
You wanna come give it a try, Jared? See how there's still like parts that haven't hidden here? That's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. You just really want to get like a nice little bit of coverage on everything. Grabbing them by the base, just in case any parts wet, because what will happen is there will literally be a big fingerprint if you grab something that's wet. That's like the very first step towards a final product that's going to look good because what will happen is if you have seam lines and little chunks of plastic on it and then you paint that, then at the end you have these seam lines and chunks of plastic. So you want to make sure you do every step along the way to make sure you have a good end product. If you have tiny little areas that aren't completely covered, and you're gonna you're gonna have this desire to get in there and be like and hit that little spot that, that that's got a little white or got a little gray. Don't do that. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You're gonna do more damage by getting in there and trying to spray onto that little spot that's not covered than just leaving it alone and hitting it with primer. So yeah, these guys are good. I'm actually going to lay them all back down. This little guy a little more. Can't get rid of it. Something else you can do with these guys, since they're so top heavy, you can get a washer, like a little metal washer, and glue it on the bottom, and that'll weigh them down so they don't fall over. You're going to base out these orcs and you're going to have like a couple basic colors going on. You're going to have the green of their skin. You're going to have the metal, right, which is going to be a bolt gun metal, which is actually now called lead belcher. These are all base coats. Here's a good base coat. It's called law flesh because it's orc. And then you also think like, okay, well, they have pants. They have all sorts of different little random things that are different colors. So we'll grab a gray as well. I like to base coat the entire model so I can then wash the whole model. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in, and I do it step by step. So okay, let's just start painting a bunch of silver. Got myself actually a base coat brush. You're going to scoop out a little paint, and this is going to be your paint supply. Then you thin it down with a little bit of water. 
And right now, you don't have to worry or be too concerned about staying in the lines and being perfect because this is your first layer. Okay. Everything that you want to be silver on here, everything, just paint it silver. Even if there's like a little detail that you think might be a different color, you want everything to just be painted in color. So as you notice, the paint might come on a little globby initially. Use the paint that's on here. See how it's still kind of thick? Use the paint that's on here to just keep painting everything and keep spreading that same amount of paint on and around. So you notice I'm not going back to the paint supply to get more paint on the brush because I can keep pulling it from that same first application that I did on the gun. Keep pulling it off. Uh, probably this whole thing is gonna be silver. You don't, the end result you want when you're done base coating, all your different colors on here, you don't want any black showing. So you see how it's going on there, kind of a lot subtler than where it's gobbed on here. So just keep pulling it off here. Go up your paintbrush from this gun. Like I said, it's okay if like some paint hits the guy's face and whatnot. You're doing a thin layer. You don't want to gob it on too thick because you just paint over anything that you don't want. So there's all sorts of like little things on his feet. Get all that too. So another one silver. Make sure that everything that's supposed to be silver is silver that you want it to be. I'm sorry, Lynn Belcher. I said you might come back in and like this little tail flute maybe you'll paint it red that's fine right now you're just base coating trying to get as much silver on as much silver that you want so good enough do you want to <coughs> you want to every so often get the paint off your brush because it'll start drying on there and just get it all off okay so um once you've primered all your figures and you start laying base coats, I'll move over here and show you, like, these are, uh, this is a Nurgle army I've been working on with Nurgle Space Marines and Plague Bearers. So I have all these Plague Bearers that are um, base coated with one color. And then I'm going through and adding some of the smaller colors to them to, um, because uh, the base coat was kind of like a big, Overall color now, I'm adding little highlights. Like they have these little bone spurs coming out of their hands that I'm doing with a lighter brown that's going to get a base coat on it. And what's really important, or not important, but the way I kind of go through step by step is kind of just take little groups of models at a time, five to ten at a time, instead of like laying out. 30 models in front of you and being like, oh my gosh, there's so many models I'm never going to finish. Just do it in stages, like here's all the base coat, now here's all the light brown that I'm going to go through and hit everybody with light brown. So those guys all got their light browns, now everybody's got these little plague swords. Plague swords, I am going to base coat with warp lock bronze because I want them to have this rusted old patina metal look to them. So now I hit them all with the warp lock bronze, which I thin down a smidge. And so these swords get that on them. When you're dealing with a really, really, really big army, like a bunch of plague bearers, 
It's good to, to be able to do a mash production thing. Like three basic colors, put a wash on them, do a dry brush, and you're done. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. If you want to go crazy and like do super detail on every single dude in your army, absolutely do that. Do whatever you want. Personally, I like to spend more time on characters and specific important guys than all of the little dregs and troops. So getting all then also doing like, okay, I have my bronze paint out, so let me go through and do everything that's supposed to be bronze. As opposed to like, one guy, let me do the bronze on him, let me do the green, let me do the red, let me do the orange. Now the next guy, bronze, red, orange, green. No, just go through each one. Bronze, 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 bronze. So right now, uh, before I'm putting washes on, I'm using the Games Workshop texture paint to paint the bases. Texture paint's really interesting because it has, it's basically almost seems like they mixed dirt and little globules and granules in with the paint. And it's a really quick an easy way to create a base coat, a base paint. I don't know how well the detail is seen, but basically it creates like highlights and ridges on your base, just with paint alone. And once you put a wash on there, it really, really accentuates the highlights and the shadows. So not only is it a paint, but it's basically creating texture. And they have all sorts of different colors. They have grays, you know, if you want to do city. They have greens. But it's a really good start to just painting your base. But the texture paints, if you don't want to get too crazy about basing out your model with sand and gravel and tufts of grass, you can just put a texture paint on there and then put a wash on. That's not bad. Yeah, and even with the texture paint, if you get a little bit on their feet, it just looks like mud. Yeah, so on this guy, there's all sorts of little working with plagues, and I'm working with earth tones and greens and browns. This guy, I did a brown base coat. And then he's got all sorts of worms and intestines coming at him. So I'm using a green on those, knowing that when I do a wash, all this will slightly change color, get different highlights. This guy's got all sorts of little maggots and worms coming out of him. The great thing about when you put a wash on this stuff, it will change the way this looks tremendously. Where it just kind of looks like there's just some weird green stuff on there because the washes soak into the cracks and crevices. They're just going to artificially create all sorts of highlights and shadows that weren't there before. So once these dry in a minute, we'll put a wash on them and then you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't have any
I didn't have any worms. This guy's got a worm. Uh, worm tongue. Just like generic space marines, we call the generic space marines codex, but then customized with an army, which gives you a lot of creative freedom. It's very fun to look at. Or you can have one of the individual space marine armies that have their own codex, like space wolves, blood angels. Alright, so. I don't remember. You might have a tear. I've got my plague marines that I've. I put all the basic base coats around them. I've got my bronze, I've got my orange, uh, I've got the other basic uh, base coat on there. So I've got a group of five of those because I like to tackle models five at a time. And now I'm going to put a wash on these guys. Now the wash I decided to go with after a lot of back and forth is the... Where did it go? The Agrathax, the Agrathax Earth Shade. Which is the replacement for the old spackle that everybody used to use. Fire attack, so last time so when you apply wash, it's super easy to put a wash on. You just cover the whole model with it. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Just evenly coat the whole thing. Make sure the coating is even. Something you also have to remember is that at some point gravity will take over and start causing all this wash to, to droop down to the bottom of the model in different spots. So understand that it will pool in certain areas that you might not want it to pool in. You might have to pull it around. The great thing about a wash that makes it so different than a paint is that you can move it around on your model. It's not a paint, it doesn't just go on. It's got a see-through quality to it. Just want to make sure you get it into every little crack and crevice. Completely cover the whole model with it. Once you have the whole model covered with it, then you can start looking at it and saying, okay, there's too much pooled here. Let me try and soak a little up with my brush. The wash can be sucked up through capillary action in your brush just by touching a model that's got too much wash on it with the paintbrush. It'll suck it up into the paintbrush. It's pretty cool like that. And if you want, if you put on your wash and you find after it dries that your model's not as dark as you wanted it to be, just put on another wash. It's that simple. So it's kind of darkened them up, done some ugly stuff on them. This was an even darker wash that I put on this guy. So then you go back in after you've washed it and it's dry and you can dry brush it or you can start putting highlights and shadows on it what I'm going to do right now is go back through on this guy and hit everything that was bronze with a little bit of bronze again to make the bronze pop out a little bit. So I had like little details on the gun. I'm just gonna lightly bring the bronze across it. Just to bring that out. I had the edge. There. Edge of the shoulder pad had a little bronze. This is actually 
causing all the bronze detail to pop out a little bit more. Very carefully bringing it along the edges. Not terribly exciting, but it's all about being careful. And if you can see something that I'm also doing, the way I hold the model is real important. I'm bracing it. If you're doing this, you're gonna be all over the place. See how I hold it just like a pencil and kind of brace my hand against my hand and it's creating a more solid base. And that's gonna help you to apply the paint really nicely. Stay in the lines, be real careful. It's really, really, really about patience. Anybody can apply paint really well if they're just patient about it and you don't rush it and you just carefully apply it. Patience is the key to application. So you can see all the the bronze that I've added back on there is now kind of popping out a little bit more than it was before because I've now gone back over stuff that got dulled down from the wash and it's now brighter. So what I'm doing with the bronze here can be applied to every other color on this model. So I'm going back over the bronze for everything that's been washed to make the bronze kind of pop again. You can then go back over the silver highlights here, so I'll hit it with a little bit of silver to bring the silver back. I'm going to go in on all this like brown armor and hit the highlights with the brown to make the brown pop a little bit more. Just kind of go back in to create, recreate these details that kind of got muted by the, by the, the shading of the wash. And, um, but leaving all the cracks and crevices and the dark edges that the wash created. So that's what I'll go step by step and hit everything. It's patience. That's all it is. Thank you all for watching. We hope it was informative. And be sure to subscribe. Happy gaming, everybody.